I'm going to be taking control of the moderation role for the next 30 minutes, so you're all in safe hands. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Shane Kehoe. I'm the co-founder of SVK Crypto. SVK Crypto is a community-driven venture capital firm based out of the fine city of London. But it's not about me, our SVK Crypto. It's actually about the audience. You guys, giving value to the audience and also insight how ecosystems funds view the markets. Today's panel is entitled, The War Chest of Ecosystem Funds. And as you can see, we have a wonderful lineup of talent, minds, and money. I have Tiffany from Ontology Global Capital, Tony from Neo Global Capital, Brian from Block One, and Mamet from Emergo, building a global Cardano. AKA, for you and me, the guys with all the money. So, here's how this is going to go down. I need three things from you by way of an introduction. Your name, what you do, and who you do it for. And you all have approximately 60 seconds to get through that. Let's kick it off with Tiffany. Sure. Hi guys, um, my name is Tiffany Lee from Ontology Global Capital. Uh, we are a venture capital fund under Ontology, and we invest exclusively in blockchain and crypto projects. Um, our mission is really to support the development of blockchain technology worldwide and to really drive real adoption of business applications within the entire ecosystem. And a little bit about myself, I come from a traditional VC background, have been investing in a lot of internet high growth projects since 2016, and I've been with Ontology Global Capital from the start. Hi, my name is Brian Mailer. I'm with Block One's EOS VC team. I'm based here in Hong Kong. Uh, a little bit about me is I come from a PE background, previously in New York City, um, and been in Hong Kong for the past year. Uh, Block One's EOCC team um, specializes in investing in companies that are building in uh, on the EOS, EOSIO software or expanding the EOS community. Hi, uh, my name is Manmeet Singh. I am the CFO and CIO at Mergo. Uh, Mergo is the commercial venture arm for the Cardano ecosystem. Um, we have a very basic remit. We focus on two objectives. One, increased adoption of Cardano, and two, driving value to ADA holders. So everything that we do um, has to fit one or two of those objectives, at least. Uh, we have offices in Japan, in Singapore, in the US, in India, uh, and we're expanding to other regions and countries as well. Hi, this is Tony Gu. Um, I'm the uh, founding partner from uh, New Global Capital. Uh, so what NGC is doing is, uh, is Singapore uh, incorporated fund, venture capital fund. And uh, we manage two funds. Uh, one is uh, ecosystem fund for new. Uh, one is uh, financial driven fund. Um, you know, previously I was from bank industry. So I was doing buyout fund. Uh, so I buy and sell banks, uh, you know, for many, many years. And I found it pretty boring. That's why I'm coming to crypto space. Uh, there's one, I would say, uh, misunderstanding about NGC is that uh, we, we, we do manage uh, ecosystem fund for new, uh, but we're actually helping many of our uh, portfolio companies to develop and grow the ecosystem as well, you know, including ontology, actually. And, and I think many projects sitting downstairs uh, have, have got some of my wise as well. So we, we, we're a kind of multi-chain uh, ecosystem fund. Okay. Perfect. So here's what's going to go down. If I hear you rambling, I might cut you off. If I hear you talking nonsense, I'm probably going to cut you off. But if I see the audience losing interest, I'm damn right I'm going to cut you off. Keep it on point, add value, and let's get right down to business. In fact, it's going to be quite hard to stay in the game. So what strengths do your ecosystem funds actually play? Maybe we're going to kick it off with you, Tony. Yeah, as I said, um, <laughs> Uh, it's more like multi-chain fund, so it really depends on uh, which chain, what the strategy is, and we give specific advice, which is uh, almost all, all we can do co-investment uh, together with them. So I think one of the strengths we have is that uh, it's very um, uh, adaptive, right? So different chains will have different strategy in different regions. You cannot have one uh, one strategy face all kinds of thing. It cannot be, you know, I'm the next public chain for the world. I don't think that's true. 
uh, everyone has their strengths. Uh, so I think we are pretty clear about that, and we have a, a tailored strategy for each project. That's our strengths. Got it. Tiffany, what's one strength that your fund actually plays? Sure. Uh, with our close relationship with ontology and our close ties, you know, the projects that we invest in, we, we provide catered incubation support depending on the particular needs of the project, whether that is technical assistance, that's BD, that's, you know, future fundraise or marketing. It really depends on what the strengths and the weakness of our portfolio pro project, and we connect them to the right people and to the right resources. Brian, from block one, what's your strengths that your fund plays? Sure, I think our strength is definitely how we decentralize the money. As you know, we have five different funds set up around the world. Uh, those satellite funds are able to reach expanded networks. And so uh, that reach we have through those five funds, whether it's Galaxy Digital, SVK Crypto in London, we're able to get those, tap into those networks and provide those resources when they come back to block one and they want to sit down with our dev relations team, are able to help build out those projects and get them um, up and running faster. Gotcha. I'm it. So um, somewhat, I guess, maybe a little bit differently, we're not actually structured as a fund. Uh, Emergo was there from the genesis of the Cardano project and the concept. So the way our, the way the Cardano project is structured, you know, we have IOHK that's building out the protocol. We have Emergo that's doing the commercial and venture side of things, so the business angle to it. And then we have the foundation that's leading sort of a decentralized, you know, governance structure on top of all this. Um, because we've been there from the beginning, it's not like we're a separate fund structure that's only there to invest in these projects. We are intimately uh, linked with the foundation, with IOHK. We work very tightly together. We know where the protocol is headed, what's coming up, what's not. Uh, and that, in turn, allows us to sort of think of areas and applications and industries and so on where we think we can have some sort of impact. Um, so then we work very tightly within our ecosystem to actually identify the right kinds of projects that, again, go back to the basic two principles, increase the adoption of Cardano and drive value to ADA holders. I think communication and also having that view um, is very important when building this because we're such at early stages, it's so nascent. And I think also the guys at Block One do a very good job from really down bottom, bottoms up approach and top down. Brian, with the considerable funds you have raised to date, where are you most focusing capital allocation and most importantly, why? Sure. Um, so I think capital right now is being uh, spent a lot into gaming. Gaming's an early adopter marketplace who's a lot of the gamers are looking to build using blockchain, whether it's a uh, collectible or non-fungible token. Those are definitely areas that there's going to be a lot of um, increase in utilization over the next few months. Uh, we've already made a couple of investments through the funds in companies like Mythical Games or High Fidelity. Uh, those teams are led by leaders. And so I think that we've identified some strong leaders in the gaming space who've done it before in the traditional games, and now they're looking to implement blockchain solutions to take them to the next step. Tony, what about yourself? You've raised considerable funds. Where are you most focusing your capital allocation and why? Yes, I think there's some commonalities among us, right? I think these things were focused on two, two areas. One is called digital economy, including games, and other digital economy, including videos, um, videos right? Uh, you know, uh, digital content is one of the key focus. Um, another thing we are focusing on is financial services, which is uh, either is uh, uh, relevant to crypto or you know um, which is relevant to the traditional uh, financial markets by using blockchain as a tool. So these are the key uh, focus areas for us for the moment. Each ecosystem presents hit here has a challenge. The challenge also being an opportunity, and at SVK we love an opportunity. Each protocol has so many benefits to a wide variety of industries. How do you help support the projects you deploy capital into? And maybe I'll start with Mamet. It may not be structured like a fund, but how do you have support for the projects that you invest into and, and almost cross collateralize and help each project out and help themselves by doing so? Sure, okay, so if the project, for instance, is leveraging the Cardano protocol at this point or early in the near future and so on, then we have not only our own entire tech team 
that can actually help the developers there to integrate the protocol, as well as help them develop beyond just integration of the protocol across their entire tech stack. Uh, in terms of you know, building a business out of it, see what, what I think a lot of people end up forgetting is you can integrate a protocol, but then at the end of the day, there's still an entire business to be built out of it. You know, I've got 20 plus years of doing nothing but building businesses, investing in early stage companies, spent 15 years in China, four in Japan, now based out of Singapore. I am from India. So, you know, this market, this ecosystem and so on, we have tremendous uh, access, understanding and a network with. And then we've gone ahead and also built an entire sort of network similar to the strengths we have here, both in Europe as well as in uh, the US. So we're working with them in very similar fashion as a very sort of active VC would, who's taken an active, passionate interest in actually building the entire business. We're not looking at it purely as a tech play, use my tech, here's a check, yeah. right? That's that's very far from how we're looking. Yeah. Uh, so everything, so before we even accept, or let's say, before we invest in a project, I, I'd might, I might spend a few months with the team actually sort of working with them and understanding them and getting to know what they're actually building, how they're going about it, to figure out what are all the elements where we can come in and genuinely add value beyond the check, because the check is the easiest part. I think for, for all of us, it's actually getting those businesses up because what we need in the entire space right now is actual adoption. I uh, totally right? agree. I'm, I'm, at SVK Crypto, capital allocation is only one very small part of it. It's about the community. If you want to have adoption, you have to have that community layer. Uh, Brian, at Block One, um, how do you help and support projects that you deploy capital into? Sure. Um, I think the EOS community is like, ever-growing, and so that's been a great component for us is that we have a lot of meetups and a lot of uh, engagement events that we're able to work one-on-one -on -one with these uh, projects. So as you know, we did the uh, EOS Global Hackathon. We hit five continents in six months, and from there we were able to bring our tech team, Dan and Brendan, um, and the other leaders of our company, and bring them to places that normally they wouldn't get the exposure to. And so this is uh, two kids coming from a garage, building a great project, and they're able to sit down with Dan and Brendan and hash through their idea. And some of those teams actually went on the finale that we did in Cape Town, and we're still working on making investments. And we, we saw the value early on um, after the first event here in Hong Kong, where we had over 300 people, and we realized that we shouldn't let all these projects not go to delivery. So we actually re uh, redevised a project called Hack Pitch Launch, where we uh, are first checking the door for these companies. So these are real projects, started off of the hackathon, teams came together, and we want to make sure that this actually gets delivered. And so I think that's a big change from traditional VC vesting, where it's just a check. This is nurturing from the start and getting them growing. Can we, can we see that to continue? Can we see a schedule of hackathons maybe next year? I, I know you're, you're, you're very busy building out and continuing to upgrade the ESIO. Uh, I know that you were on a journey all the way around the world and you didn't stop for, for several months. Is it something that you want to do again this year, or do you think it'll be next year for the Global Hackathon? Yeah, there's, uh, there's obviously what we're doing to uh, plan that out, and our marketing team is pretty busy trying to figure out how they can make sure to engage everyone who didn't right. get a chance the first time. Right. Uh, Tiffany, uh, what about yourself? How do you help and support the projects that you deploy capital into? Sure. Uh, so if you look at the Ontology Global Capital team, we all have come from a traditional VC space where we have entrepreneurial experiences in the past. So I agree with everyone here that writing the check is very easy. It is what you do after that. What we can offer them is, like, on the technical side, we leverage really on ontology and our other portfolios to match and provide them and help them grow the ecosystem together and that may include digital identity layer two solutions uh, you know security audit etc and etc and as a fund itself we also do a lot of roadshows so we started our roadshow this February where we went to Harvard and also San Francisco giving our portfolio a lot of exposure and help them to attract the right talent and make the right noise yeah I, I agree with all, all your points and I think each of the panel attack it from a slightly different area depending on your skill set but all very valid in the recent bear market have you seen any pullback in terms of developer engagement? Are new projects being built in your ecosystem, Tony? Uh, I think uh, the answer is yes. Uh, there is, a, uh, I'll say, a pullback, uh, but in a good way, meaning that 
we, we are focusing on things that work, right? You know, it used to be uh, some industry, which let's say um, very heavy linked to the physical business industry are not maybe easy for blockchain to be adopted. We'll probably cut back on that. We're going to more for easier industry to focus on. Uh, from that aspect, um, we are kind of rationalizing uh, the effort. Uh, Mamet, in the recent bear market, have you seen any pullback in terms of developer engagement or new projects with regards to your ecosystem? Maybe not necessarily Cardano because it's early stages, but I'd like to kind of get your feel on where we are with regards to the market versus the tech build out. No, I, I mean, I haven't experienced any sort of pullback in terms of new projects coming up or, you know, entrepreneurs being excited about the space and blockchain and trying to figure out how they can solve certain problems or enterprises looking at developing solutions, uh, leveraging blockchain. I haven't seen that. What I, what I have seen is an enforcement now in this bear market for both entrepreneurs and enterprises to think more deeply about exactly what value you can extract, you know, it's not going to solve world hunger and world peace immediately. Therefore, what exact value are you looking to extract out of it and to come up with you know, business plans and pitch decks and whatever have you where you've actually thought about the business and not just thought about how quickly can I sell a white paper narrative, get a cash grab, you know, list somewhere, flip, and move on with my life. So quality, can't, I think, overall has improved. There's still a bunch of the scamsters and so on, but overall the quality has improved, but I haven't seen uh, fall back in quantity. At SVK Crypto, we really do love a bear market, and it probably comes from my time working at a hedge fund. I love to buy when everyone else is selling, and I feel that, especially over the last uh, few days here at Token 2049 and Hong Kong Blockchain Week, uh, the amount of quality people and quality projects that I've met um, has really been outstanding. It's been wonderful to see that. Not that I don't necessarily want to meet all projects. It's just refreshing to this time last year, we were just bombarded with projects, and we didn't invest in any project that we met here last year, and it's funny to say that 99.9% .9 of those projects I haven't seen here this year. So a real thing of flight to quality, and I love a, a bear market because you can actually network, build relationships, and make great investments at unbelievable valuation. So we really thrive in this type of, this type of market. Brian, um, in your case, have you seen any pullback in developer engagement or new projects with regards to EOS VC? No, I think, uh, if anything, it's definitely a heads down build phase. Uh, so it's been the way for us for the se past six, seven months uh, where we see teams usually coming from traditional marketplaces or uh, traditional developing, and they're now they're looking at blockchain and implementing, uh, implementing it for like a reason that makes sense on a commercial level. So uh, a lot of times they're looking to implement blockchain to remove a pain point or speed up a process. And it's been exciting for us because now we're seeing businesses that normally you wouldn't identify as being a blockchain solution at, or using a blockchain solution is definitely embracing Racing it now, we're definitely behind the scenes. I've always said that blockchain should fade into the background, where you should be using a DApp on your phone or an application, uh, any app store you're buying, and you don't know that it's blockchain. Rather, rather you know that it's secure, it's fast transaction times, and you're uh, able to have a lot of transparency. So I think building that trust between peer to peers is what's most important and what's been missing from traditional environments. So uh, I wouldn't say there's been a decline at all in the developers. Uh, I would say there's actually an increase in developers that weren't originally part of the blockchain space. Um, I heard someone talking before I came in that there was a lot of projects migrating over from Ethereum to EOS. It's interesting what you can hear in the corridor as an event like this. And whoever's looking after the Twitter handle, feel free to quote me on that. Um, I don't know the person's name, but if I find out, I'll let you know. What about yourself? Um, sure, just to add a bit to Brian's point that um, I do agree that instead of a pullback, we actually see more interest coming from the development community. And from Ontology, we as a public blockchain are providing more and more support for these developers and these projects. For example, we're coming out with our uh, incentive program at the end of the quarter, and we also have lending and borrowing programs that are coming out and trying to provide some financial support to help these projects and help these developers get their projects started. Um, when deploying capital into the space, where do you see the most value being accrued? Is it with equity 
are as a token investment? Maybe you'll start off on that, Tiffany. Sure. I think there's definitely a, a clear trend towards more equity investment. Um, everything was very simple before last year. A two-pager SAF and then token was transferred and, and, and that was it. But right now, we definitely see more interest um, in equity, especially with a lot of uh, reverse ICOs. They already have a very clear business model. And if they have a revenue stream, then it's very important for investors to share part of that uh, you know, revenue or future uh, profit. Brian, what about you? Sure. Uh, so Block One's ESGC program, as well as the satellite funds, all uh, make equity investments. Uh, those equity investments we feel are, are very important because we invest. Uh, we've made investments from early stage seed companies all the way up to Series D. Uh, so such as an uh, investment in High Fidelity, led by Phil Rosedale, is that's a company that's in a large growth phase. They they've already done several rounds of fundraising, and we're looking to expand their offices in Seattle and bring on more people. But then also on the converse side of that, we have very early stage companies where it's an idea. It's two people who've come together they started building their team, they just need that initial capital injection to start their business. So we feel that equity investments allow us to invest across the full spectrum and help teams at all different levels get to delivery. Mamet, yourself, sir. Yeah, so if we're talking about early stage businesses, then I am taking that same early stage risk as any VC or anybody else out there. So I, you know, I, my interests and everything have to be fully aligned with the founders, and that Great. comes out of the equity. Now, if we're talking about um, more mature businesses, more mature teams, or those that already have a well-developed business model or something that now they're looking at scaling further, in those scenarios, it might ne not necessarily have to be equity, but it would have to be some form of security token or a security that is linked, you know, my rewards are linked to the economic performance of the business Absolutely. in some shape or form. So, Absolutely. so we are proponents of the STO um, wave or whatever you want to call it, but yeah, lots of steps to figure out. Um, let's get to my last question because I can see that our time is almost coming to an end and it's a really important question. Let's look towards the future. We love the future at SVK Crypto. In your view, what does it hold and how is your ecosystem prepared? What are you all doing today for the future of tomorrow? Maybe you'll kick it off, Tony. As you know, just summarizing one word, which is adoption. Uh, if you are thinking about this, if less than 100 million or even a billion people are using blockchain, it doesn't matter which end they're using. I don't think this industry have a future, right? So we, we should all work together to have a global adoption as much as possible. It doesn't matter which end it's on. Matt, what is your future looking like? How is your ecosystem prepared? What are you doing today for the future of tomorrow? So sure. So apart from our you know, regular sort of investment kind of business. I mean, we recently launched two other things. So we launched an accelerator program uh, starting in New York called D-Lab. And this is in partnership with SOSV, which is a $550 million fund of funds that literally just does accelerators all over the world. And this is a blockchain-focused accelerator where we're not even 100% forcing anybody, hey, you got to do you got to build on Cardano to come into it. We're trying to seed uh, and work actively with early stage entrepreneurs who are genuinely leveraging blockchain and could be building something, you know, the next big unicorn. Sim simultaneously, as an investor, one of the biggest challenges we faced is even after you write the check, the first question, I don't know how you guys feel, but the first question that everybody asks is, okay, now I need this talent and that talent, I don't know where to find it. So a uh, few weeks ago, we just launched an education program in India, which is also blockchain agnostic. Uh, we're gonna be training about 2,500 students in the first 12 months in partnerships with several hundred universities in India on blockchain skills and bringing them into the ecosystem for everybody, right? So these are two, I guess, two plays from our end to kind of build that adoption down the road for the entire ecosystem, not I, just I, I, I think everyone in the room will agree. We've got a lot of respect for that, going right back to the grassroots and getting children, getting kids, getting students involved and looking at it from a blockchain agnostic, I think it benefits all. Brian, the future, what does it look like? What are you doing today for the future of tomorrow? 
Sure. Uh, I, I would definitely say that our focus for the future is that I think we all agree that mass adoption is what everyone's looking for, and we know that in order to have mass adoption, you have to have mass utilization. Uh, so we need to make sure that the, the pieces and the extra add-ons to the network are there. So when a company's building a great solution to do ticketing or to do car rentals, that they have a KYC provider, that they have an onboarding for fiat to crypto, they have an offboarding of crypto to fiat. So all those extra components don't need to be built by every team. We don't need the replication. So rather, we're looking to make sure that we are investing behind those great uh, components, the add-ons onto the network and onto the dApp. So we know that we need to make a full ecosystem. And so when that full ecosystem is built, you're able to have those great products. And so that's taking definitely a page out of other people's rule books from, the, from years past on how you build an ecosystem, whether it's a web browser or something that we know that we need to have those add-ons or we're not going to have a great ecosystem. So the rails have been laid, we've, we built the blockchain, the community's taken it, and the next thing we need to do is have the end users, everyone here and everyone at home, actually using those dApps. And so we know in order to get there, we have to keep building the components onto the system. Very interesting. Tiffany. I'll keep it very simple. Uh, we think it's very important at this time to really settle down, attract good talent, build product, and also invest in good project that will help to grow the entire blockchain ecosystem. You know, it's wonderful to hear each of you talk with your own initiatives. And when you look at them, they're actually all quite, quite different, but all very important. And I think by having a combination of that, it's the only way that we are going to do something today for tomorrow's future. So maybe you'll all join me in thanking our wonderful panel that executed so well. Thank you so much. A big round of applause for all the panelists for today. Thank you so much.